Is this the greatest LEGO castle set ever made? Let's find out. Hello everybody, it's your residential brickologist Lego Lee here back with the Lego Ideas set review. Today we have the Medieval Blacksmith. This set retails for about 150 US dollars, has 2,164 pieces, and here is a front look at your gorgeous box with a look at the back of the box that shows off some of the features of this set. Included with this set here is one thick instruction manual at the front has, of course, like most typical Lego Ideas sets, some information about the design of the sets. These guys look pretty silly in their medieval costumes. You actually even have a little timeline of the history of various Lego Castle blacksmith shops, which are super cool. And in total, this manual has 224 pages of building. View from Lego Castle. Over 2,100 pieces later and the medieval blacksmith shop is complete. This is an absolutely gorgeous looking model. You get four minifigures, a couple of small animals, a tiny small carriage side build, and of course the main build itself. But of course, let's start off with those minifigures here first. Fittingly, the first minifigure we'll take a closer look at here is the blacksmith himself who has a ginger ponytail. I can relate to that, but I cannot relate to that epic beard. I love the use of the Santa Claus beard piece here in the ginger color as well. His printing is fairly average. Underneath the beard, he has a pretty decent looking face print with a nice double-sided face and good back printing. And I also love the inclusion of his trusted dog, the Husky piece here as well. The next figure included with this set here is a female archer, and I absolutely love her face print right there, closing one eye to get a better shot. That is really cool. The rest of her printing is fairly mundane, but I do like her dual molded legs. Of course, she has the iconic bow and quiver pieces from Lego, and from the back, she has a nice back printing and a good double-sided face as well. Saving the best for last are the patrons of the blacksmith shop themselves, the knight figures. Now, these guys actually reference a classic Lego castle theme with the Black Falcon logo. I love that look and it's really cool to get a reference to a classic Lego theme. And the minifigures themselves, I think, just look absolutely fantastic. They have the exact same torso and leg printings that look really good. I also love that printed shield and their weapons look great as well. And they have some really cool unique face prints and good reuses of hair pieces from collectible minifigure series, which also look great as well. Additionally, included with these mini figures you also get some knight helmets which give them of course the complete knight aesthetic which is fantastic and from the back they have some good back printing so all around these are definitely the showstopper minifigures of this set the dragon knights are attacking the outpost tower you can build the king's castle now it's time to dive into the main build of the set itself here, the blacksmith shop itself. And this thing is huge. This thing is way, way bigger than I thought it was. Not only is it dense, it has just a volume to it that is quite impressive. And for a size comparison, here is your blacksmith minifigure. You can just see how large this house is, which is really cool. It makes it an accurate minifig scale, which I love. Frankly, this thing is so large and my studio just isn't big enough that you're not going to see too many wide shots of this set. We're going to have to get real close up here. And what better way to start than by looking at the tree of this set? Now, normally Lego trees are just one or two pieces. However, they kind of went above and beyond with this tree in particular. This design is insane. In some ways, this tree is the most intricate build in this entire set, and it really pays off. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and the way they captured the shape of the tree here is just fabulous. It looks so, so cool. And it's an apple tree. You get four different red apples there, which is really cool. And you also have a target on the tree for your archer, which I love as well, and a cute little froggy perched up there as well. It's rather dark and hard to see, so I'm gonna precariously hold this thing with my hands. There is a well build right here that's not super involved but gets the job done and back inside here it's definitely hard to see but you have a collection of logs for the fire which is a nice little touch as we work our way back to the front of this build this detail the medieval style architecture is just absurd lego did such a beautiful job with this design i absolutely love it and Maybe now it's time to actually look at the blacksmith shop itself. It seems kind of weird to, you know, blow the main thing that's set out of the way here real quick, but you know what? 
it's at the front here. It's the first thing you're gonna see, so let's talk about it. So here is the blacksmith's workstation outside, which looks really, really good. You have a great looking print right here. I love that print. That is a flawless looking print for the sign for the blacksmith shop. And then you have the rest of the details. Of course, you have the fire right here and the bellows. Now the bellows don't actually pinch like a real bellows would, but there is a cool play feature here. Simply by pushing on the bellows right here, it actually lights up the fire with a red light brick piece. That is awesome. I always love to see light bricks and Lego sets and that is a great inclusion here for playability and it works extremely well. Now, of course, what would a blacksmith be without an anvil? Honestly, this anvil design right here, it's not the best. It's extremely simple and kind of feels really simplified compared to the rest of the build in the set, but it does get the job done decently well. The blacksmith shop does continue on to the inside here with with this nicely designed door that can open inside, which is pretty cool. But before we look at the interior of this set, I wanna work my way around the rest of the exterior to look at those details first. The blacksmith's fireplace continues all the way up to the top floor of this building, and it looks really great. I love this design, and all the stone details, I think, work really well. But probably the best detail on this entire set from the exterior is the roof which uses, ironically, a ton of the Nexo Knight shield piece to make up the tiles of the roof. And oh my goodness, this looks absolutely gorgeous. The texture the use of that piece brings is just incredible. I love the look of this, and LEGO chose a perfect color combination. Most of the roof here is dark blue, then you have some sections that are a normal blue, the sand green adds a cute little touch towards the top, and then the black works really well too. All of this just comes together to make a fabulous looking design that continues all around this build, including this awning here over where the blacksmith works. You can even see some of this design continuing onto the side here, and as we flip the rest of this build around to the other side, I mean, seriously, just take a gander at this. Holy crap, Lego. You have gone above and beyond with this roof design, and this section at the back here is particularly cool because, well, you have some missing tiles. That is super clever and I love that look and definitely adds to the medieval aesthetic. Wow, Lego, you just outdid yourself with this design. I could gas up how good this roof looks for like over an hour, but honestly, the rest of this exterior here looks equally as good and Lego perfectly captured that medieval style architecture so, so well. Look at this design. That looks perfect. That looks like it was taken straight out of Medieval Village. I love everything about that. And it's even great at the bottom as well with some nice foliage and plant details, including a pumpkin down here. All of this just looks so good. And unlike a lot of Lego sets, this thing is enclosed from all sides, making it a complete build that looks absolutely brilliant. And finally, for the exterior on this side, you get a really good look at the shaping of the roof here. That is just immaculately designed. And then you even have the staircase right here, which eh, it's not the greatest staircase in the world, but it does lead up right here with another opening door, very similar to the one down here, and even some more great designs. So the exterior of this thing looks great, but how does the interior stack up? To open this thing up, you have to simply just remove the roof, which is a very typical thing from LEGO buildings. I would have loved to have seen some kind of swinging open play feature, but that might have been too much to ask for. So simply, what you do right here is just take this entire section right here and pop it off to reveal the interior of the first floor, which is of course the continuation of the blacksmith shop itself. It's not the world's most creative design inside here. There's definitely some open floor space and everything is fairly simple, but you know what? It gets the job done. There's a rack right here that has a broom, a shovel, an additional hammer, a bunch of things, and a little barrel right here. You have some pots and pans and a knight's helmet, some knight's shoulder guards being worked on right here. You have some coal right next to the fire. Not entirely sure what's supposed to be in this box, but you also have a shield right here, and I'm assuming this is supposed to be something that you can sharpen your metal on, and of course, an 
additional anvil inside. So all of these details are fairly simply designed, but they get the job done and make a nice addition to the interior of this set. Okay, this looks a little bit awkward. I have removed the second and third floors of this set from the bottom level, but I want to show you the interior of these additional floors as well. Like the first level, you can simply take off the entire roof section of this set to access the middle level. The detail inside here is pretty well done. These chair designs here are a little bit awkwardly large, but very creative, and I love how they use an axe piece to actually make the chair. That's a cute little touch. I love the candles on the wall here and a small feast they have going on. There is a staircase that of course leads to the next level and behind there appears to be a keg. So I guess our Lego figures are drinking. That's a bit of a raunchy detail from Lego. As we turn to the other side, I love this little detail of a carrot being chopped. That is so, so simple, but incredibly effective. You have an additional fireplace right here with some pots and pans. And over here, I think is where they are churning some butter. That is another fun little detail. So the interior here, honestly, a little bit better than the last floor, and it works out really well. This looks even more awkward just having the main roof section of this set without the remainder of the build, and... Honestly, I had really low expectations for this third floor. I've built enough Lego modular buildings to know that once they get to the top, they kind of forget about details and just throw in a couple things to make the build feel complete. But overall, it's not that interesting. That is not the case here. Lego went above and beyond with its design. And also, I love how you simply just remove this piece to access the interior, which is a bedroom. And oh my gosh, this looks great. Lego has been making some very solid bed designs for years, but I don't think any has ever been better than this. This bed looks incredible. I mean, seriously, the use of parts here, the designs, the colors, everything is fantastic. The treasure chest at the back there is a cute little detail. I love this desk with the piece right there with the clue that says once upon a time. Way back there, there's an additional fireplace, and this is where the staircase lines up with the second floor. But maybe my favorite detail on the entire interior of this set is this. That is kind of morbid because it's a bear fur rug, a bear skin rug. So there's a dead bear inside this set and that design is pretty simple. It's usually just uses some tile pieces. It's nothing crazy to write home about in technique wise, but it looks so good and just adds so much to the aesthetic and feel of this medieval set. Wow, I love everything about the interior of this third floor. And finally for this set, we have the small horse-drawn carriage for our knight minifigures. Now, normally when I'm reviewing a Lego set, I get the small side builds out of the way first. However, I really wanted to hype up the rest of this set so I could adequately rant about this build. This build is small, it's insignificant. Honestly, if it weren't in this set, I wouldn't have cared. I do love the horse. The horse looks great, and we don't get too many of these horse pieces in Lego nowadays, so it's nice to get the horse here, but Look at this carriage. This looks like a build from 15 years ago. It's blocky, it's ugly, it lacks any detail or substance. This sucks. This carriage build sucks. It does get the job done, it can hold minifigures, but there's almost no moving pieces besides the wheels and of course the horse drawing it. This is such an underwhelming carriage build and that feels so weird because everything else on this set is so fantastic. The Black Knight is coming! When the Black Knight challenged, everybody got very excited. They quickly closed the sides of the castle. Alarm! Come on, hurry up! Bringing everything together, let's get the final verdict here on the new LEGO Ideas Medieval Blacksmith. After I completed building this set, my roommate came into my room and took one look at this thing. He said, wow, that's a pretty house. And this is coming from a guy who doesn't really care about LEGO all that much. And his sentiment is honestly, I don't even know if it's worth it. Because I don't think this thing is just pretty. This thing is drop dead gorgeous. The build of this set here is one of the best looking builds LEGO has done in a very long time. Which brings us into the pros of this set. The design is fantastic. There's almost no flaws to the design of the blacksmith shop itself. The unique minifigures are really cool. This thing actually has pretty decent play value even though it's a more adult focused set. You can, you know, access the interior of the whole thing. I love the bellows being able to light up the fire. All of that is really fun. There really just aren't too many cons with this set which brings us into the cons segment of this review. My cons here, 
four minifigures for 150 bucks, especially from something that's not a licensed theme, that is definitely underwhelming. They should have included at least a couple more minifigures. This is a castle set. You have tons of castle pieces at your disposal already. Just include a couple more figures, please, Lego. And obviously, I already ranted about this. I won't go on any further, but that horse-drawn carriage build sucks. It does not fit in with the rest of this set's quality. But besides that, everything in this set is fantastic. I absolutely love this design. It's a great price with a great price for piece. It's a big build. This is one of the contenders for set of the year and we're only in February. So that is why this set is going to get a 9.5 out of 10. Those are just my thoughts though. I'd love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Also, while you're at it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Maybe consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Any small donation goes a long way. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope to catch you guys next time. Like Idea Set Reviews. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.